Did you know? The first backlit Game Boy wasn't the Game Boy Advance SP, but the Game Boy Light. The Game Boy Light was released in Japan in 1998, and was never sold in any other region. Nintendo had been working on a new Game Boy before the Light was even announced as early as 1995. It was codenamed Project Atlantis, and was based on a 32-bit processor. Magazines at the time suggested it was capable of running Super Nintendo standard games, and was rumored to be released in 1997. By the time 1997 came around though, the console was unfinished and nowhere to be seen. Instead, Nintendo released the Game Boy Color in 1998 as a sort of stopgap so developers could spend more time working on Project Atlantis. Even though the Game Boy Color was only a modest upgrade over the previous Game Boy, it did add more than just color. The CPU was twice as fast and it had four times the memory of the original system. Inside the logo of the Game Boy Color, each letter in the word color represents one of the five colors the system was originally manufactured in. Throughout the life of the Game Boy Color, Nintendo experimented with ideas that would become basic features in later hardware releases. The Game Boy Color was the first handheld gaming console to offer wireless communication. It had an infrared communications port at the top of the system, and functioned using the same technology found in a TV remote. The Game Boy Color was also the first Nintendo handheld to have a motion-controlled game. Kirby's Tilt and Tumble was controlled almost entirely by a series of accelerometers that were built into the cartridge. The original Game Boy line, including the Game Boy Color, sold 118.69 million units worldwide. In August 1999, word leaked that Nintendo was working on two new handheld consoles. The first was known as the Advanced Game Boy, and the second was a Game Boy Color with cellular communications built into the device. It's not known if the second rumor was true, but Nintendo had previously released cellular communication-enabled Game Boy games like Pokemon Crystal and Mobile Golf. These games connected to cell phones using a mobile adapter allowing for remote play. However, no mobile-connected games or features were released outside of Japan. On September 1st, 1999, Nintendo formally announced the Game Boy Advance. Nintendo stated that cell phone connectivity would be a major focus for the new system. They claimed that by connecting a cellular phone to the Game Boy Advance, players would be able to download games, play remote multiplayer games, enter chat rooms, and read email, all on the Game Boy Advance system. This announcement was made when RanNet, the online service for the Nintendo 64 DD, was just starting to take off. In August 2000, Nintendo released more information about the Game Boy Advance, including its design, battery life, and price. Nintendo of America board member Peter Main announced that the system would have some kind of modem, but no other information was given. In February 2001, Nintendo's RanNet service was discontinued. By that time, developers had Game Boy Advance development kits in their hands, and there was no documentation regarding any internet support for the system. The Game Boy Advance was released on March 1st, 2001 in Japan, and in June 2001 internationally. The system was designed by Satoru Akata, who had worked under Gunpei Yokoi designing the hardware of the original Game Boy. The Game Boy Advance had virtually no competition during its life cycle. In 2001, Swedish tech company Ericsson worked on a 3D-capable handheld that was meant to contend with the Game Boy Advance. The system was called the Red Jade and was designed by some of the same people who designed the Atari Lynx. The Red Jade was cancelled when Ericsson went through financial troubles, and the company was eventually bought out by Sony. In 2001, Nintendo unveiled the e-reader add-on for the Game Boy Advance. The e-reader used paper cards to transmit data for games, unlockable items, and other collectibles. It was criticized for being bulky and requiring two Game Boy Advances to access content on cartridge-based games. The e-reader was successful in Japan, but never caught on in North America or Europe. As a result, support for the add-on was dropped, and many previously announced e-reader cards were cancelled. The GBA port for Super Mario Bros. 3 had brand new hidden levels that could only be accessed by swiping their respective e-reader cards. Levels 1 through 10 were released internationally, but Japan had 20 more level cards than Europe and North America. Pokemon Coliseum for the GameCube had compatibility with the e-reader in Japan, but this feature was removed in international releases. However, a group of fans discovered the content was still in the game by modifying data values. All of the text was fully translated and players would have been able to capture a Shadow Togepi, a Shadow Mareep, and a Shadow Scizor in this mode. One series 
series of e-reader cards that were never released was a collection of Game & Watch games. An early version of Manhole was given out at E3 2002, but that card has become increasingly rare as time goes on. The rest of the games, Berman, Spitball Sparky, Fire, and Octopus were all announced but never released. Throughout its entirety, many innovative and unique peripherals were created for the Game Boy line of handhelds. Bandai released a pocket sonar device in Japan, which enabled fishermen to locate fish underwater using a Game Boy. It sold for the equivalent of around $150 and featured a built-in fishing minigame. There was also a sewing machine that had compatibility with the Game Boy. The Singer Isaac sewing machine connected to the system via link cable and allowed users to design patterns with a special game cartridge. One unreleased Game Boy accessory was shown by DSi designer Masato Kuahara at the 2009 Game Developers Conference. It was a touch panel that went over the screen of the Game Boy Color. It was abandoned because it apparently didn't work well without a backlight. The touch panel was attempted again with the Game Boy Advance SP and operated more favorably because of its backlit screen. Kuahara stated that the touch panel was not well received by Nintendo management, but that Shigeru Miyamoto liked the general concept. Masato Kuahara said that he likes to think his design helped influence the creation of the Nintendo DS. Another obscure accessory for the Game Boy Advance came in the form of the Gluco Boy. The Gluco Boy was a game cartridge that doubled as a blood glucose testing device for child diabetics. Blood glucose tests were converted into glucose reward points that could be used to unlock games. One of the weirdest ideas for a medical Game Boy device never caught on, a device called the PD Sedate. The PD Sedate was patented for use by doctors to help reduce stress in children while they were sedated. It connected to the Game Boy and rewarded the player with small doses of nitrous oxide as they progressed through the game. That's all for today, but don't forget to subscribe to Did You Know Gaming and follow Did You Know Gaming on Facebook and Twitter. Make sure you also check out DidYouKnowGaming.com and if you like this video, check out our other videos. But wait, there's more! If you haven't had enough of my sultry and seductive voice, go to my channel Vsauce3 for the facts and science behind all things fictional. It's a party for your mind.